What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Web3 DJs. Remember, if you enjoy this content, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. We have an outstanding guest here today, the creator of Bushido Apes, Bushido Royale, but most importantly, the one they call the king of non-fungible tabletop gaming, Mr. <laughs> Fondue. Jesse, how yeah, are you? Great, guys. How are you guys doing? I'm doing amazing. Yeah, beautiful day here in North Carolina and very grateful and happy to be here. So thanks for having me. Yes, sir. So first question, what are your pronouns that you'd like to be referred by? Um, yeah, him, him's fine. Yeah. And yep. then uh, second question, what is non-fungible tabletop gaming? Yeah, sure. Um, well, er early on in the space, I kind of... Um, I saw the opportunity for gamification, like a lot of people, right, in the NFT space. And um, but I didn't want to do video games. I wanted to try to emulate tabletop gaming that I played as a kid. And you know, I've I've had a love for board. I have a love for all games, right? I love video games. I grew up in the video game generation, but I really have an affinity for tabletop games. So the idea was to bring that vibe of analog game modes with community driven games to the space and that's what we've been doing for a year now it's been great that's awesome does that answer your question <laughs> yeah i know they answered the question but uh, right before we got on you were kind of explaining how you started maybe we start yeah. there so it, it sounds like you've been in the space for a minute when did you actually get into nfts how'd you find the space what's your story yeah i um i got in early uh it's been about a year and a half i suppose early uh during COVID. i think a lot of people got onboarded in the um in the what was it called what was the app where we were uh, uh clubhouse right you know the club i don't know if you guys are around for yeah, the clubhouse yeah. days but uh, it's been about a year and a half and um i was started early doing portraits i'm, I'm a painter and a traditional artist and i did portraits in the space and i was selling some i did one of mike tyson and uh, oh, nice. a couple other ones and they were selling okay but you know it was kind of not really collectible and um it was good. It just wasn't, you know, totally blasting off. So then board apes happened. I, I bought some board apes. I'm a board ape holder and me and my brother. And it was about a week into owning the board apes. And I started getting requests for people to do derivatives of their apes, right? This was a big market early on. So I did about 25 different derivatives from, you know, Clint Eastwood to Spock, you know, to all these different derivatives that they wanted of their apes. And you can see those in my wallet or on one of my posts on my Twitter. But uh, then, you know, we started thinking about, we were into Ghost, you know, I don't know if you guys know Ghost Project and, and a couple other ones that were using some simple gamification. And it just dawned on me that we could bring an RPG style game, you know, with simple mechanics to the space. And so we started, I started it that week. So it's, it's been, I, I minted the first Samurai, it was in June, I think it was June 4, 14th of last year. So yeah, it's been just about a year. Yeah, that was a crazy time. I remember the apes, yeah. like that whole that whole period was so exciting because everybody oh, yeah. was like, oh, doing for me, doing for, you know, yeah. I, I remember that. That was super cool. So yeah. when was the first time that you heard about apes? Uh, the, uh, a few days before. Um, actually, it's a it's a funny story. My brother, um, who's a investor, excuse me, investor in the space and, you know, um, has art. He's not a creator, but he invests in different art. He called me that morning and We'd been in the space up to that point, I think about five months, and I was just so burned out on it, you know, and I was like, I think I was in bed and he called me. It was the day after Mint. It was that morning. He called me at like eight in the morning. And I think if you look at my, when I purchased 12, 20 and 80, 78, my two apes, it was like at eight something in the morning. And he called me. He said, man, you really got to look at these. You know, everybody's talking about them. I got some. And I said, man, I don't even, I, I was like, bro, don't even bug me right now. Like, I don't want to look at this stuff. So they said, dude, I got a feeling you got to check these out. So I rolled over. I said, all right, I rolled over and looked at them. And then, um, I ended up buying two. Uh, it's kind of funny. We talk about how, you know, this was early on, right? Nobody understood a lot of this stuff. So I was looking at like, I, I remember passing laser eyes and gold grill and all these rare traits. And I'm like, oh, these are net. I don't want these. So I bought like, you know, kind of plain apes, but, uh, you know, you, you, live, you live, you live and you learn. Um, yeah, my brother ended up getting sick. So yeah, it was, it was, um, yeah, that was an incredible time. And then, I mean, every minute since has been just as electrifying. I mean, honestly, uh, it's been crazy. I mean, as you guys know, the space is wild, wild west. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then you, so you had that, you started doing derivatives and how did the first project come to be? Did you just say, Hey, we got enough interest. We want to start a project. Uh, I, I had zero interest actually. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, like I said, I'd made a couple prototype board games and I was re I was going to actually do a Kickstarter right. for a board game. Yeah, I had a board game called, yeah, I don't really want to give out too much alpha, but it was about kaijus attacking the city and then you would have to develop weapons. And I had a couple different game game ideas and uh, I was just talking to my brother about it. You know, we, we talk daily in the space and he was like, man, Ghost is doing this stuff with wheels and it's just really interesting. And I said, I just dawned on me like this is such a platform. So I literally started in a week and I just started making samurais. I think I made five or six samurais on my first drop. And um, I just put them up there and I, I really didn't have it totally figured out. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not overly analytical when it comes to that stuff. I kind of jump in and just uh, try it. And so, yeah, we jumped in and it, and it, there, there's some of the first apes that John owns that one. And, you know, yeah, these are, these are some of the OG ones. And so this and, was your first drop here? Was the uh, the, the, the one on the top left is from the first drop. Yep. That's okay. actually that's actually number three. So that there was one, two, and three, which were the same, but they had different backgrounds. And one was called Battled. So it'd have like arrows in them, like the traditional prints from Japan. So uh yeah, we just we started it and it 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 just exploded. I mean, I'd sell out every time I'd do 10 of them, we'd sell them that night. And then it um Wow. You know, it, what's cool about it is that they're they're one of ones and they're they're playable heroes in the game. So we have adventures, we have house rules. You know, there's different samurai houses, and there's different chapters. And your got your hero can die in the chapter. So it's kind of like the game Dark Souls. I don't know if you've ever played Dark Souls, where at the end of the chapter, everybody who died regenerates, and we play a new game with a new new narrative, a new bad guy, new heroes, and stuff like that. So yeah. That is really interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to write that down and um, check it out, especially because, yeah. like I suggested to you beforehand, I'm interested in the project regardless. So yeah, I would definitely love to learn more. Awesome. Um, and so, how many total Bushido apes are there now? And yeah. uh, Bushido apes, I guess, I guess uh, to caveat on to that, um, or to add on to that, excuse me. Uh, tell us about the difference between the heroes and villains and the peasants and the yeah. items. Yeah. 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 So. Right now, there's 144 one of one samurais, and I sent you the link in your in your Twitter. If you, it's Bushido Apes Heroes and Villains, okay. And there's 144. The floor is at three ETH right now, and then yeah, this is it. And then you know, so these are the one of one heroes that are playable, and then you can breed you can breed them if you have a male and female. You can have offspring, and those are randomized that I I draw for them custom, and then villains are basically just assigned by your. Your, if you click on one, you can see the traits and you just pick your alignment. So we have villains, we have like neutral good, chaotic good, stuff like that. Peasants, early on, these were getting pretty expensive. I mean, they were selling for three to five ETH. You know, people really wanted them. So what we did was I created peasants for entry for people who didn't have the money as a samurai. So there's probably about 90 peasants, I think, in the game, 80 to 90. Okay. And the way we work those is if you have a peasant and you can win a samurai in some games, you know, so if we do a random game and your peasant survives, you may win a samurai or the community can vote you to samurai status for, for good behavior. If you're active in the community, you're playing a lot, you're, you're having fun. We, I've, I've promoted probably 15 to, I don't even know. It's probably about 15 samurai to for free to samurai from peasants. Oh wow. And so that's yeah. like legitimately rewarding your community. And I oh, think yeah. Wanna, yeah. I think it's loading. Um. Yeah, yeah. No, we we've given I mean I've given I give people win samurai. So th this third one you see here that see this yeti this yeti? Yes sir. That, that's that's Shaga. That was a that was the first adventure we did and somebody won him for free. So we, I give away oh, I, I no. mean I've probably given away 75 five nft i mean we give away so much stuff on the thing but that's part of it right i got to get back to the community so yeah i really enjoy doing that yeah so, we, yeah. so when you yeah. put this together yeah how, how did that whole project come together so you're an artist yep how did you find the dev side how did you think through the logistics of, of bringing I this i did it I did, I did it all myself man i just did it really yeah yeah everything i'm the artist i was a marketer i did so I, I just minted, so, I'm, you know, my new project coming up is Bushido Royale, okay? That's 7,200 pieces at Samurai, and you can check our website for that, yeah. And that, we have a dev team, so we have the guys, um, we, we have Tim uh, from 
from the Ape Remix, Dow, and those guys that are doing that, the dev work for me. And I have a whole team with this project because it's much larger. But Bushido Apes was more like a boutique game. You know, I wanted to try something and see how small I could keep a community. And we have about 100 active players. And, and you know, oh, it was nice. – and it was really – it's not huge, but I wanted – you know, kind of what's happening in the space is everything's kind of this FOMO and this like fast buy and dump or move on to a new project. And I really wanted to see if I can make a small community that would be here in a year. And we did it, you know, and, and we still have people in the Discord talking. We, we met in New York. We took, I took everybody out to dinner in New York at the last NFT NYC. We're doing it again on this trip. We had people fly in from all over. So uh, I wanted to experiment with Bushido Apes on – if I wanted to make a long-term gaming community, what would that look like? You know, not based around just a quick flip and stuff like that, but about playing games on weekends, people winning prizes, having an alpha group. And that's what that is. Bushido Royale will be a much bigger project, obviously 7,200. And that's going to be more like a traditional drop. Yeah. But to answer your question, I, I did this all. I just came up with it in my head. I had some storyline. I knew how I wanted the combat to work on wheels and then, you know, have different wedges for combat. And that's really all I, I just started it, man, to be completely honest. Yeah. I didn't that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's the best yeah. way to do it. Just dive yeah. in and figure it out. Right. There was no rules. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there, there, there was no rules. And I, I really had no, I had almost no capital. You know, the beauty of the space was it was very easy to, to try it, you know, and, and I was kind of just going to experiment to see if it worked and to, I was surprised as anybody that people were like, I love this. I love the gamification. I want more of this. And we've been here a year. So it's been amazing. Yeah. That's outstanding. And, and so, um, you know, why Bushido? Talk to us. Yeah. You know, what does that mean? Um, and, um, and why have yeah. you oriented this around? Is, is this something that like a lifelong dream? What is this? Yeah. You know, I mean, so a couple, I have a couple major loves, you know, and one of them was, um, you know, I love gaming. And I love movies. Like I really am a movie file. I mean, I, I if I could go back in life, I'd probably go to director school or learn to write screenplays or something. I really love film, and I just you know, I, I love westerns, and I love right. samurai films. You know, which are really westerns are just samurai films, right? The spaghetti westerns are really just you know, Yo Jimbo, you know, Harry Curry, these Japanese, the Seven Samurai. They're really just westerns. And when I was talking about a genre, you know, I was like, we could do barbarians we could do uh, i wanted I, I actually had a small collection i was working on before this that were kind of like space bandits you know aliens and i was just talking to my brother and we were just like dude samurais you know i've always loved it i mean it's it's such a rich history it's so interesting um it's such great storytelling and then the bushido code just makes for such a um a great structure for storytelling. So yeah, it just seemed like a no brainer after we heard, I was like, yeah, Samurai and nobody's really doing it yet. So yeah, I, I want to show you guys this. Oh, nice. I want to see it. So I, ju I just got this from Japan. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, so wow. I watched the whole documentary about Samurais and that whole thing in Japan. It's it collectors is huge. That is so bad. So when, it, where was that made? In Japan. Or when? Yeah. This, this is, uh, so this is a replica that was made in the 1920s. And um, it was it was made for like film and stage, or and the creator it was renowned in Japan. I have the paperwork over here, and he I don't know his name off the top of my head, but um, yeah. So I, I got it from a antique shop in Japan. I had him ship it over. It's crazy. So but <laughs> I'm gonna awesome. I'm gonna get one of one of my communities gonna win this in Bushido Royale. We have a we have a prize wheel, a big wheel, and we're giving away tons of prizes, man. So. Yeah. So are yeah, you what able you to? Talking? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us like how the game works and functionality and all that? Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. So Bushido Royale, I wanted to make simpler, you know, like Bushido Apes is a little complicated. I, I understand that. And it's kind of like, it's not for everybody. It's for people that want to invest a little more time and a little more community, you know, and have that. So that's great. But with Bushido Royale, I, I wanted to make a, a larger, simpler collection with very easy gamification. So it's super simple. There's going to be 7,200 Samurai. with a, I have, I've done 100 101s within that collection. 100. Nice. These are all custom inked and painted, and they're all based on yokai, demigods, and monsters that are all historically correct. So I have all of this. This is my buddy Sway made this. This is awesome. Um, so we'll have those. And essentially, at having one of these samurais or, or monsters gain you access to a daily bot drawing. So you just hit a button on the bot, and if you win, 
you go to the big wheel. The big wheel will be probably once or twice a week. And on that, we're going to have prizes. We're going to have everything from uh, electric bikes, Lucky 73 electric bikes, to one wheels. We're going to have about 21 wheels on there. We're going to have electric skateboards from Boston wow. Board. We're going to have vintage helmets and swords. I got about 15 different samurai swords we've ordered. Um, we, we're going to have some crazy big prizes, like everything from shirts and hats up to, we actually have a, um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. We're going to, we have a seven day cruise on there. That's a, that's a gift card okay. from princess lines and for two people, you can take it anywhere in the world and use it. You could use two days, three days. So we wanted to make it like prices, right. But you know, with it. So first and foremost, it's an NFT collection. And then with a very simple game, just to kind of get back to the community on the back end. Yeah. That's that makes awesome. Sense. Yeah. So, <clears throat> So prior to doing this, you were an artist. Were you a full-time artist? That's what you were doing, and that's how you made money? <laughs> your, your audio went out. I don't know if it's just on my end. Uh, no, it, it did go out for me as hey, well. Hey, check, check. Can you hear there me? We there we go. There we go. Yeah. 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 Um, so you so were a chef. I was a chef for about 18 years of my life, and that was my early professional life. And um, – I, I did. I was very successful in the chef industry, which is, you know, projects like this are kind of like running a restaurant, right? You have a theme, a vision, and then you have a team, and you're trying to bring in customers. So it's, I find it, it's, it, you know, there's a lot of correlation there. And then um, I got into sales, and I before, right before this, I was working for a Dutch company selling. It was, it's kind of weird, but I was selling soil and water monitoring equipment. So I was in like a hydrology and geology type industry. So it was, it's kind of weird, but I've been an artist my whole life. Um, just, I really haven't been able to, you know, I always sold art and I would do stuff, but the NFT space really gave me the opportunity to be my own boss and create my own community without middlemen. And that's why I'm so grateful for the space. That's why I want to help so many artists. We have four artists in Bushido apes that have got, that weren't drawing before they started and now are all selling online. Wow. Yeah. So we, we really, I really want to um, promote that in the space, you know, people, people that are yeah. creative that are holding back. That's you know? awesome. I think, I mean, I've heard that story so many times, but I'm assuming now you're doing this full time. Like this is your gig That's and right. you've been able to parlay what you were doing on the derivative side and your other project into this. And now yep. really building around this community and this project. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Full time. So I think this is month six. I've been full time. Yep. That's so I've, awesome. I've, I've, I've doubled, I've doubled down on it. So, you know, we, we're committed to Bushido Royale. We drop on J July 7th. Uh, the, like I said, 7,200 Samurai. We're going to give on sellout. We're going to do three water wells for water wells of, of Africa. We're building three water wells in Africa. Uh, there's a link to the charity on our uh, website. We're going to do at least, it, you know, we have to see where ETH is, but I would like to do $150,000 for the prize wheel. So where the prizes and then, um, you know, yeah, just just have a fun, great time. And, and then, of course, the best art I've ever done in my life. You know, the, the tra I think we have almost 400 traits already on the oh, layers. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so, it's kind of crazy. So how are you making the art? Are you doing this on Procreate? What tools are you using? Right here, man. I got the iPad right here. All on the iPad. All, All on the on. iPad. Everything's on the iPad. So yeah. when you're making the the the. I guess it would be the gener generative part, right? Where you're making multiple. Yeah. What program do you take from Procreate, and how do you put that in and get like seven thousand? Yeah. So, um, well, you make a lot of layers. So, like, here, let me. I'll just show. I'll show you guys. For Always been interested in how that works. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I'll walk you through. It. So, like, to give you an idea, we have a couple different helmet. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. I can see kind this. of. Yeah. So nice. these are these are all just different helmet types. You know, and there's about two hundred here. So, um, wow. it, you know, you, you got to take, so essentially you start with an idea and then you take each drawing layer. So let's say you do the eyes, you do the eyes first and we have about 30 different eyes. Then you do the hair and we have like 30 different hair and you just keep layering it like that. So it's a lot of singular drawings that you're doing, but then you send them to the devs, you know, individually with a, with a name and then they're going to layer it through the, through the, um, protocol, you know, through, through the code. Yeah, essentially. I'm, awesome. I'm not. I'm not a developer. <laughs> that sounded horrible. <laughs> well, hey, you figured it out the first time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that was easier because I was doing it through OpenSea, so I was using their 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 contract, so it was a little bit easier. Um, this is 
more flexible, but a little more tricky. Yeah. So, so last year was quite a bit different. If you were in the space, yeah. I mean, the whole Wagme vibes, and now we're in somewhat of a bear market, if you will, the market's yep. down, who knows what's going to happen, but I'd like to hear your opinion on what you see the next year looking like, uh, because launching in this time, I mean, there's still people buying projects are still yeah. selling out, but um, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on where things are going and how are you guys positioning yourself during this time? Yeah, that's, you know, that's a great question. I, and I don't want to predict too much. You know, I think everybody's got to do their own research. Um, I'm sure you've heard that before. Not but, financial advice. Yeah, not financial advice. But what, what I would I would tell you as a creator is um, I get to be true to my convictions and why I started creating in the first place, regardless of whether or not I sell out or I don't or whether the community likes what I'm making. So I start with that. You know, um, I'm doing this because I want to and I love I love it. I love waking up every day. I work all day. I get to make amazing art and make these cool adventures for people. And I get to give people awesome stuff. So whether the market's down or up, I operate. You know, I'm not going to let that dictate where I'm at in my headspace right. as, much, as much as I can. Right. Um, now, the overall arc of the market, um, I think it's going to change. You know, I think I think there's been a lot of big hype projects. And I think as time goes on, it's going to settle into a more realistic floor for a lot of projects where community and, and story is a little bit more of the drive, you know? So it's still the wild West. People are rushing into big projects, just like a, a gold rush because exactly. they can make significant amount of month, amounts of money and you don't, you can't blame them. Right. That's awesome. But I think as time goes on, people are going to say, I'm okay making one ETH on a samurai if I get to hang out with a hundred of my friends for an hour a week and not be bullied, you know, or, or be, be a good, healthy space. And um, I'm, I'm getting something else out of it, right? Instead of just this FOMO kind of fix in a, in a big payday, you know? So I, I think that's going to, that's where we're going to move. I mean, the, the bigger conversation of where is crypto going and, I mean, I think it's going to change the world and I could talk for hours about that, but um, you know, I, I, when, I don't know, you know, I, I really don't know, but I think this is the future of collectibles. I think it's the future of, of art. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm highly invested into different art in the space because I completely believe in it. Yeah. I think it's a really exciting time. Speaking I, of so what, what sort of investments are you into? So you obviously yeah. have a board eight, but yep. like, what are your next, you know, two projects that you really like and, and why? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, and right the last few months I haven't been that active because I'm so busy. Um, when I was doing Bushido apes, I had more time, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to kind of buy stuff. So I, I was big into board apes. I have mutants, I have dogs. I bought a bunch of the other side, the other de other side deeds. I think I have 13 of those. So, you know, I have a couple of the, um, codas, right? Yeah. Codas, oh, yeah, nice. little codas. Um, <laughs> So I, I like that. I have, um, what else am I, I have some Hearst, you know, I'm trying to accumulate the, the living artists. I think that's interesting, but, um, I, I'm not, I haven't really gotten into a, a recent project, honestly, cause I, I'm kind of unplugged from it, but I heard trolls are doing well. I'll give some shout out to the trolls and I've been watching that and, uh, you know, okay, bears has been have been doing well too. So yeah, yeah. I just did like a full case study on like, uh, okay, bears definitely you really did? interesting. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. And so uh, I I think is that a record player behind you? I think yeah, I've seen yeah. you post about it a couple yeah. of times. I've been meaning to ask thing. you, man. You know, in, yeah. the, in the spirit of like the samurai Clint Eastwood kind of made maybe modern day um, Quentin Tarantino esque movie. Yeah. yeah. What? soundtrack if Bushido Apes had a movie which one of your records oh, back there man. would be the soundtrack to it <laughs> jeez that's a that's a good that's a great question man um well you know I I, I gotta say I would say so I have an, a press of Ziggy Stardust over there the whole album and okay. if you haven't listened to Ziggy Stardust the whole album you it's see, actually we always got our pens every time you say <laughs> something we're like yeah so, yeah, so we're that, lifelong learners on this show. Awesome. <laughs> well, first of, first of all, get a record player if you don't have one because the sound is unbelievable. I mean, it's just so, so good. Now, I'm trying to think of a, a good record that would match the Bushido, but I, I would say the, the one that comes to mind is Ziggy Stardust, and I listen to that the most because it's, it's actually a whole story 
that unfolds. You know, the problem with when you listen to songs on the radio, you get one song, right? Right. But Bowie, when he wrote Ziggy Stardust, it's actually a, a whole story. So it starts, you know, and it's about this alien coming to Earth, you know, and, and integrating with us to bring, you know, his his message to us. So uh, in the vein of storytelling and in, in the vein of adventures, I'd have to go with Star, uh, yeah, Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. For Bushido. But I have a bunch of great records over there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy um, seeing you kind of post your picks of the day. Is there anything that yeah. you listen to for like uh, creativity? Anything like that? Or is oh, this- yeah. Yeah, uh, I like um, Kendrick Lamar right now. I'm listening to a lot. I got like I just got two more of his albums. Those are amazing. Um, I like Sturgill Simpson. If you haven't heard of him before, he's a yeah. he's actually a, a country star, but he's um, amazing and he's very spiritual and kind of you know psychedelic almost on a lot of his stuff. Turtles all the way down. He's got a lot of philosophical references, um, and I love all that stuff. So he's got he's got one album called um, Tales of the Sea, I think, and I listen to that all the time and it's so good yeah yeah he's been recommended to me a number of times yeah he's awesome so yeah. what about artists who are your influences as an artist oh um i mean so my i mean i was i'm actually a portrait artist if you look at you can find some of my stuff in my fondue wallet and i have my portraits and i did a portrait of um of uh you know i did a couple i did one of damien hearst that sold and i did one of mike tyson that i sold and a couple others um, I mean, I, I like traditional artists. I like Stills and Rothkow and the Expressionists and postmodern artists. I mean, I, I grew up going to the Metropolitan and looking at art, so I, I love that stuff. But um, I get you know that's a that's a great question. Who is my like biggest influence? Would pro- would probably be the Brothers Hildebrandt. I don't know if you know who the Brothers Hildebrandt are. I think no. yeah. So they did the early paintings of. Um, the Lord of the Rings, and you you can Google them really quick, and you'll see they're from the seventies and eighties, and they were they were twin brothers who did amazing kind of adventure storytelling type paintings, and they did some of the classic Lord of the Rings, the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, and ever since I was a kid, my brothers had one. I have the book here actually from when I was a kid, and my brothers, I have one of them framed images framed in my room, and uh, I used to look at that book for hours. And just imagine, you know, it has the dwarves and it has Gandalf or I mean, they did other stuff besides Lord of the Rings. Um, and it just blew me away. Yeah, there they are. So, so wow, what an excellent <laughs> reference. So you it's like see that old, it's, it's like a bunch of cover book covers. Dude, so that see the book up there with the with the demon on it? That's the book I have right there. It says Brothers Hilde Hildebrandt. Yeah, to, awesome. le- to the left there. Yeah. And then so, you know, you oh, look I, I I had all these images in the book, so the, them all under the tree. So that's Gandalf and, and all the dwarves from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And uh, but they did a lot of other stuff. But it just those guys have been in my imagination since I was eight years old. Yeah. I, I, th- so that would be probably one of my biggest influences. Brothers Hildebrandt. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so getting back to the project, what does your team consist of right now? So you have you and then who else is on your team? Yeah. So uh, it's it's me. We have. um. Space Lab, who's a, a samurai holder, and he's doing a lot of the coloring for me. Um, we have Mobius, who is basically my right-hand man and technical advisor. He's helping me with Discord and Twitch. So we're going to be streaming everything on Twitch also. All our games and stuff with the big wheel will be on Twitch. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so we, there's Mobius. We have Dan right there. He's a samurai holder, and he's doing our community building and whitelisting. We have Clove, Clove, who's actually my brother in Florida, and he's doing he's helping me do all the storytelling and writing. So we have a ton of written backstories already created. So narrative are created on characters and, and adventures for when we start running Bushido Apes again. And then John is our largest samurai holder and a daimyu. So he that's his daimyu NFT that he got for for ascending to that level. So he's a he's a great guy. Oh, I think he's got 14 samurais right now. And um so we we keep him on as a as an advisor. He's a good friend, and we just respect everything he says. And then John did our website for Bushido Royale, and he's doing our analytics. And he's a UI uh, developer in Miami, so he's a didn't mean to dox his location, but he's in Florida. He's a great guy. <laughs> I, th- I think he's fine because he's got he's got his uh his LinkedIn links there. So yeah, that's the team right now. Okay, no, that's the, awesome. and, and, and Tim is the the dev team. Uh, Tim is on the dev team uh, that's doing the 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 contract for us. So, so what do you think the biggest challenge is? Because the first time when you lazy minted, you were doing yeah. it all yourself. 
Yeah. This time, what is the biggest challenge of working on this project the way that it's set up now? Yeah, the, I think the biggest challenge um, for, for me personally, the biggest challenge is keeping it right sized and keeping it simple. You know, I have a big imagination and I, I want to kind of not overcomplicate it, but maybe get too big for the space or where we're at, you know, and, and keeping it in baby steps. Right. right. Um, you know, like just the example that I, I have four, I think I actually have more than 400. I think I have like 500 layers as an example of me maybe doing too much. You know, do we need 500 layers? Most projects have 200 traits. You know, I have 500, sure. you know, yeah, um, yes, sir. so, you know, for me, it's, it's, um, slowing down and, and, um, you know, and, and, and making it accessible for the community. You know, I think Bushido Apes, I, I have a lot of ideas, you know, and I want, I could see gaming and I could see game board communities all over the world getting access with their NFTs, having 3D printed miniatures that we send them the code for, people having fun doing social games where we're, we're, doing, we're doing scavenger hunts in different locations all over the world and then coming together on Discord. So, I mean, I have a million ideas. So my hardest, the most difficult thing for me is slowing down and being like, let's get this base project out first, you know, but I just see so much potential for the space. You know, it's just so exciting. So, yeah. 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 I think that's a really awesome idea. If everybody could get like a game board character of yeah. their um, Bushido that I you know, I could use, you know, I'll take it with me all yeah. the time. We have friends that love to play games and that sort of thing. And this would come in handy. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, or, or even, even it's just put on your shelf, you know, but we give you the code and you can print it anywhere you want. You know, you access a 3d printer and you print it out. So, yeah. So, cool so when did you guys start working on this project? Like how long have you been in production now before the mint? We've been I uh, we we've been working four months, yeah, four months now. Yep, and um, we're, I'm I'm almost done with all the art, and we're we're gonna start sending it to Tim in the next week to work on layer la layer because they'll, they'll do for people that are gonna aspire with this. You want to do a bunch of test kind of generations to see if the layers are working, sure. if they look good, if there's any clashing, and then we're gonna um go to NFT NYC and hopefully. You know, we're, we're going to push for July 7th. So the week after will drop. And um, yeah, so it's been about four months. Yeah, and that's, that's a great awesome. point. You know, I was in your uh, Twitter spaces the other day, and I heard you talking about the big plans that you actually have for NFT NYC. I don't, I don't know oh, if yeah. I can, you know, yeah. how much you want to give away, but um, I think <laughs> part of it starts with what you're wearing right there, right? Yeah, the yeah, shirt. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. got, uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> So, so the helmet that I showed you guys earlier, well, we, I have two of these. So th okay. this one, this one was vintage. This one was, it's not cheap. Uh, but we're going to be giving this away at NFT NYC. I have another mm. one that that I'm getting custom made. That's like it's more designed for a replica, right? So it's not metal. It's but it's still amazing, and it's um, I'm getting that made. And if we can get it in time, I'll have that to give away at NFT NYC. Bro, Hofstra, you better win that for me. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be out there. I was at I was at NFT NYC last year. Oh, you're gonna be out man? there. Yeah. I'm gonna be out there again. So, what? Yeah, yeah what do you got like I, going I, for I, NFT NYC? Like, would it? We yeah. have something planned? A party? What? So, you know, I was gonna do a party, but what happened was the with the Ape Fest. We didn't get the dates till now. So, first of all, I'm bringing a ton of merch. I'm bringing helmets. I'm bringing. I got. 500 different stickers. We got, I bought $1,500 with t shirts, hats. So if you see me, we're going to give away a bunch of stuff. And then if we're going to do the raffle on the helmets. Oh. No, I was telling Hoffa oh. to grab two of them for I'll me. Grab two. Okay. <laughs> I'll send you one, man. I'll send you one. Yeah. yeah. No, All, right. Got, All right. All right. We'll rock that proud. Absolutely. You know, we're we're going to do some kind of Twitter thing where, where you put on the helmet or take a picture with it, you know, tweet at us at the event. And then at the last day, We'll ship it home to somebody. We'll ship. We'll take it to the FedEx store and ship it for you. No. Um, and so I was going to do a party. We're having a dinner on the twenty fourth for a certain amount of, of community members plus one. If and you know, but I do want to do a big party. But with the way the drop was going and everything, we may be postponing a bigger party, and we may actually do it in Vegas. So we might actually have a group because a lot of our members are out west and then in Vegas. So we might actually do something in the fall. Uh, after sellout where we'll fly out there and have a party for three days, something to that effect. Yeah. So in a perfect world, you guys launch, you know, 
two years from now, what do things look like? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great question. Um, great question. Two, two years, you know, I, I want to, I want to make, um, interesting NFT projects and the best start I can make for as long as I possibly can. So, my vision would be to have a group, my a studio. I, I, I'd hire on my team full time. I have a few of them working full time now, and we would bring on everybody full time, and we would develop games under an umbrella. So we we have a couple ideas for Bushido. We would end it. We have another layer called Legacy that would be after Bushido Royale, and I'm not going to talk too much about it now, but that would be the final layer for the Bushido universe. And then we already have mm. in conceptual conversations a couple other projects that we would like to do um we have one that would support artists completely almost all the proceeds would go to young artists through ipads and then also through paying for their studio spaces for a whole year up to 20 wow. artists um and that, that one is in early development we already have kind of the art done but we want to keep it in our back pocket so yeah my goal would be to keep making amazing projects you know i mean if if i can I don't, I'm not in it for the money. You know, I, I love the community. I love, um, I love this. So if I can make what I made before and, and do this, I'll do this all day. You know, I'll meet interesting people. I'll, I love giving away prizes and, and, you know, just, it, it's great, man. It's such a, a great opportunity to give, you know, and be creative. I can yeah, ask for a better, better thing. Yeah. You are the bomb, you know, uh, all the cliches, but, you know, find something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Combining yeah. passion with a paycheck, all of that. It seems like you're really living that out. Yeah. And so uh, you, you talked about, you know, your desire in a couple of years to, to, you know, where you want to be. And earlier you mentioned how running NFT projects are a lot like a restaurant, running a restaurant. And so I, I want to ask you, you know, in your time as a chef, what have you learned that's going to help you get to where you want to be in a couple of years? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, um, you know, what I, I got in the New York Times in 2006. You can look it up. It was Octo It was Friday, the 14th of October, 2006. And it's, it's called Pulled Corks and Pulled Pork is the, is the <laughs> name of the uh, article. But Dana Bowen came in and we had a small restaurant. Uh, we had a wood fired oven. And, you know, what, what I, I learned a long time ago. Right. Um, being honest. Right. Is 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 the backbone to it, right? So being honest with my my patrons and then also being honest with my community is super important. Um, having a clear vision and not compromising it. So, you know, we want to do wood-fired pizzas in a small winery and we want to have really friendly open kitchen. So we stick to that and that worked. And I would go out and talk to the community. Um, so I would say um, being honest, um, working really hard, you know, uh, helps for sure. And then exceeding expectations, you know, that, that was another thing we always did in the restaurant business is somebody had a kind of an off experience, I, you know, we wouldn't just give them a dessert. We'd comp their whole bill and give them a dessert and, and exceed their expectations for coming on this journey with us. So, um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't seen that in a while. I actually have some of the papers here still. Uh, yeah. You know, the other thing about New York, having a restaurant, you cannot suck. It's like no. when I go there, yep. the service is just incredible. Yep. And there's another restaurant right here. So I'm, I would imagine that just that competitive nature and bringing that to this is definitely going to help you moving forward. Great point. Y yeah. Yeah. I mean, the restaurant industry is notoriously competitive and, and it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's constantly a balance between creativity and, and business too, you know? So, you, you know, the chef wants to be super creative and the owner wants to make money, right? So that's, but it's, you're not going to draw people unless you're doing something innovative or you're creative or your, your, your standards are very high, right? You have incredible mm -hmm. ingredients. It's just like that, that in the NFT space. And I think, you know, there's kind of this whole, whole, like, you know, teams be rugging people and, and this, you know, people not showing their faces. And I'm really making an effort to be completely doxxed and exposed. I mean, I'm doing videos now weekly because I, I do want to be in this space for as long as I can and let people know that, you know, these projects are amazing. Now, I don't, I'm not going to promise co a coin that's going to make you rich or a DAO that's going to make, you know, change everybody's life. But I'll, I'll shout out your videos. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I'll promise you this. I'll make the best art I can. And, you know, I'll always be transparent and have great games and a great community. And that's that's all I can do right now, you know.
So, Dude, so it looks like so you've got. I'm on your. First of all, your uh, link fire is sweet. I didn't Thanks, even know man. that link fire was a thing. It's amazing. The way that you set this oh, yeah, up is it awesome. Up. So you've got okay. You've got two different discords: OpenSea, TikTok, Instagram, yep. Twitter, a couple websites, um, yep. Twitch. Yep. And I were you doing this before or was no. all of this so so you weren't doing any of this before I was, and dude i wasn't on twitter uh, not even a year ago i wasn't on twitter that's yeah. awesome I, I i i had my instagram and it just i was having trouble so i learned all that you know I'm, I'm not young i'm 45 and i i adapted to this space and the twitter's not really live yet and i'm new on tiktok but i know creators on tiktok are blowing up so i'm really trying to utilize that to like you know, use the format. I, I see the value in it. Um, but yeah, if you guys want uh, afterwards, hit me up because I can get you uh, invitations to Linkfire. I have a couple actually. No, that's all. It, it's yeah, invi it's invitation I'm only. totally digging this. So what? So it. I mean, people don't understand like making content, especially on that many platforms, is not easy. That takes time. It's so nice. what does a week look like in your life? Like, how, do you have yeah. it scheduled out? Like this I day do. I'm doing TikTok. This day I'm doing Instagram. Yeah, I do. So. I don't know. So I, I was in sales and then, you know, I ran teams for my whole life. So if, if people aren't, here's a little tip for you. Uh, To-do lists don't really work. What you want to do is block time. So you want to do block management of time. So that means you block your highest priority times out and you block every minute. So when I get up in the morning, I do my morning routine. You know, I do, I do my thing in the morning. So, you know, I, I'm big into Wim Hof. I don't know if you guys know Wim oh, Hof. Oh, dude. Yes, yeah, so I do. Wim Hof. Hey, I, do. I, I, I will take you. Oh, right, let's go. You. We'll do some Wim Hof and some go. pretty sick places. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I love all that stuff. And the, so anyways, I, yeah, I get up and then it's, um, I'll block creative time. So I'll block a couple hours to draw. I, I, I'm on the phone a lot. So I'll have, a, I have a weekly team call. I'll do, you know, a podcast, stuff like that. So essentially it's just whatever I need to do, I block time. So it's a lot of drawing half the time. And then it's a lot of um, creating content for social media. So I'll create a TikTok. I have a guy now who's supporting me in writing the, the Twitter, the tweets. So we, we go through those. So we'll have a weekly call about what to expect on tweets. And then he supports me in writing them. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a constant balance of cre creating and then managing the team uh, and uh, some of the creative calls will be creative writing teams. So we use Miro. Do you know what Miro is? No, sir. Miro is a virtual um, whiteboard, and we use it. I wish I could show you. Um, we use Monday. Yeah, you're oh, welcome to share your screen it, if you'd like. It's very, let me let me let me show you guys something really quick here. Yeah, it's kind of like okay. Trello or yeah. I yeah, let me show bottom, you. I'm going to show you this right here. So this is one of our. Uh, did it work? Yeah, we can share your screen. Just, just scroll. Yeah. Screen. Oh yeah, here I'm gonna pull it up right now. Yeah. Okay. So oh, th wow. this, this, so this is one Miro board, and this is just our visual reference Miro board. So this is all the reference material I pulled up of historical armor, and I every piece of armor you're gonna see in mm. Machido Royale is based on historical accurate armor. I'm not even joking. All of this, Jeez. and then look at. So this is. The 100 one of one monsters and demigods and yokai, and we've gotten backstories on all of them, and found re traditional art that art my art is based off of for it. So this is just one level of the research that we've done um, for this project. Uh, hold on, let me show you one more. Board. Hey, what are you just uploading JPEGs to that? Yeah, so it's it's a visual mind dump, really, right? So yeah, we upload JPEGs to it. We put notes in it, and I'm going to show you. So this narrative, this is alpha. Um, I probably should show you this. Love the this alpha. is just some, Give it this to is us. this is just some narrative based stuff, uh, storylines, characters, and then let me. I'm going to show you one more. Hold on. So we have about ten of these boards. So Twitch and Discord. Um, let me show you really quick here. So this is kind of finished art, and we were working on. Um, no, no, this is not what I want to show you. Hold on. Don't look at that. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, this is just like, it's like so much to look at. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. Uh, where is... Oh, finished art. Okay, so... Yeah, so this is... That is uh, so cool. Uh, now I'm having trouble finding what I want to... We, we just renamed these, so it's kind of... Um, also, for the people on Spaces, we're live streaming this right now on Twitter. If you just go on Web3DJs 
or you go on mine, you can see exactly what we're talking about. It's probably like, oh. I can see him like, what are they talking about? But oh, yeah, go on there. On. this is actually really, really cool. YouTube, I, I got, Twitch. I got to find oh. this now. Um, so, you, you know, one oh. of the cool. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, for me, I think the thing that attracted me to the oh, NFT here. space. Oh, yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let, let me show you. This will be the last board I want to show you. So this is one of this is my creative writer Cloves board. Okay. So these are these are all the one of one that are going to be in the collection. These are completely created from us ink. They're colored now, but this is the ink that we loaded. Wow. For each each character. Look, we put a core motivator, vanity, oh, honor, yeah. lust. So this will determine their story, and then we have backstories for them. So this guy's called the Fast River is his nickname. He's a mountain girl tribe, is highly decorated infantry commander, veteran of countless battles, and is said to be has been wounded over 100 times. These guys all have back lore motivations. And um, so this is just a, a quick peek into how much work we're doing on the back end for this. Project. No, that's a awesome. lot. I mean, it's super complicated and, and well thought through. I can only imagine because you got levels. You're talking gaming. You're talking yeah. all this other stuff. That's a lot of creative energy going into this project. Yeah, man. I'm manifesting oh, yeah. fast river into my wallet right now after seeing that. Man. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, you know, in the NFT space, the, the yeah. thing that immediately grabbed me was this is going to be the new business. Like this is how it's going to be done. And I'm assuming yeah. your team is all remote based yes. on how you're using that. <clears throat> yep. They're, yeah. they're all remote. Yep. So you're having to figure out how to project manage, <clears throat> how to market, how to create this whole thing 100% remote. Like you're not sitting in a room with a whiteboard with these guys. You guys are doing this yep. all in different places. And I think that's so fascinating to me. Like just the concept of being able to create a, a business that's worth tens of millions of dollars fully remote yeah. without a space. And you can yeah. be anywhere. Like that blew my mind when I got into NFTs. Yep. Yeah, no, it's 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 blown. Well, I'm, I'm considering, you know, tra traveling now because of that exact point. You know, so I'm looking at maybe going to, you know, other parts of the world because I can work anywhere. Why stay here, you know, if I don't need to? My son's old enough and I can go anywhere. So I could go some, you know, hypothetically in this space, a creator could go to a, a location where they're, they're, they could live for a lot more, right? So their money right. could go a lot further. Yeah, it's, it's revolutionary. But the whole team's remote. Yeah, we're in, we're in New York, California. Um, uh, you know, the dev team's in Asia. My, you know, a bunch of people are in Florida. So, yeah, we're all over the country, the world. Yeah. So nice. the, uh, the marketing for this project, so your, yeah. your, your mint date was the 7th of June. Uh, it's going to be July, July, sorry, 7th, yep. 7th of July. Yep. So you've got, you know, a couple months before you yep. go live, yep. <clears throat> the marketing that you're doing, yeah. everything that we just talked about, is there anything else you're doing? Because to some extent you still have to create that Yep. That buzz at the beginning. So, so yep. what is your plan there to get a lot of eyes on this to, to have a good launch? Yeah, exactly. That, that's kind of our last stage is, is um, the final marketing push and kind of creating the buzz. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends in the space uh, from the OG time. So we, we're going to, but you know, with, with these projects, you don't want to start it too soon. So we don't, if we started now pushing, people would just forget it, right? They, right, they would sure. get exhausted. They, they have space in their head for like four or five projects. That's it. Right. Um, so we really want to, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I was a DJ too for a long time. So it's like, <laughs> you, you only have, you're going to pick four projects to prioritize. So we right. know about three weeks out, we're really going to pump up marketing. So we have lined up, um, some more podcasts. We have lined up, uh, working with some people I know who are our bigger, bigger artists in the space. Um, we're going to do a lot more giveaways and white lists and, um, of course, NFT NYC, we're going to pump it really hard. We're going to be there, you know, greeting people, giving away tons of stuff and prizes and just having a, a good time. But I'm going to try to keep it organic. You know, I, I want it, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I stand by the art. I think we have the, the most interesting, accurate and amazing uh, traits and projects, you know, honestly, ever. And so... I'm going to stand by that. If not derivatives, for sure. Yeah, I think Yeah, we think we're going to dunk on all the other, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I can definitely so, agree. Everyone, and, oh, I, I, <laughs> let, let me just ask, you know, you got us so yeah. excited for this project now. How can people get on this uh, white list? You're calling that's it the honor list, right? Yeah, we're we're like, calling it yeah, honor exactly, list. That's, man. that's, that's right. That's right. Typed up. Honor now list. people not need to list. know, how yeah. can we secure our spot as, you know, part of the samurai? 
Sure. So you can you can jump on our Discord or go to my Twitter. So it's you can either go to the Bushido Royale Twitter or my Twitter, which is uh, Jesse W underscore Art. Um, my all my links are in my link fire. And the Discord, we're going to close it. It is based on a moving island. So it's a cursed moving island where the games are played. So it's going to move. So we've had it closed. So if you can get in it now, get in it now. And then as we get closer to the drop date, we'll be closing the Discord um, you know, for new people. So yeah, just reach out to us. Get on Twitter really is the best place. You know, Tell us you want it and we'll see what we can do. Nice. And you are not lying. Uh, I definitely, whenever I first found out about the project, I was telling you earlier kind of, how I first found out about the project and really what it came down to was I, I went on a tattoo kick. I was watching all these documentaries and I fell in love with like the Japanese style of art. So I started yeah. searching up projects that had that. And um, as soon as I found you guys, I hopped in the discord and you're correct. Uh, <laughs> you need the hidden Island. And I remember yeah. I like logged onto my phone one morning or one afternoon or something like that. And I saw that like it said the hidden Island is closing at 2 PM and it was yeah. like 3 p.m. or 2.30 p.m. Yeah. And I had just missed it, so I had to wait another amount of time. And that's yeah, right, definitely right. a really awesome, uh, clever yeah. way to get people excited for your project in your Discord. Hey, St Sticky, did you see the tattoos that the community got yet? No, I haven't. Right. No. We have three, we have, I think we have three people that have gotten the logo tattooed already. Oh, so it, 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 just, just, just so you know, you get a free mint. If you get a tattoo, I'll hook you oh, up you with a free what? mint. I was actually just thinking today, like I was looking up tattoo artists to. in New York. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm dead serious. I was like, yeah. I want to get a tattoo, and everything that I that my whole life right now is NFT related. Like yeah. anything I'm wearing, it's got to have NFT something on it. Like I don't even want to wear regular clothes. Like it needs yeah, to be yeah. merch or it needs to be something. But just what the space means, like I was thinking about getting my dotty tatted on me or something like that. So hey, if yeah. you got a tip on a good tattoo artist in New York. Dude. I'll let you know. Let, let me ask around because there's a couple guys who get regular tattoos in my community in the city and out of Long Island. So let me ask and I'll find out. But they're all so back ordered right now. They're, right, they're yeah. all, back, they're, all the tattoo artists because after COVID, I'm trying to get scheduled another one. They said they can't get me until August. So wow. I'll let you know, though, if I hear something. Good yeah, yeah you should check out uh, Bert Crack, Hofstra. Bert <laughs> Crack. Yeah. I'm telling you, I went on the transformation. Is is cool. Yeah. So we are we're coming up at about an hour right now. Before we wrap, is there anything that you wanted to uh, tell people or talk about the project or leave people with? Um, no, not really. Just uh, thank thank you guys for doing this. It's awesome, and you did a great job. So I'm really grateful that you reached out to me and, and let me talk about the project. Um, I'm really excited about the space. And if you're a creator, and I would say this: if you're a creator and you're a little discouraged, it took me four months to really get it going. It took me about four months and you know, you got to find your space and, and your voice in the space. So don't give up, just keep creating and you'll find your community. And you know, the space is changing. So don't, you know, it's a little crazy right now. So I know some people come in and they're like, it's kind of like a gold rush, right? It's like an early gold rush town right now. So it's a little nutty, but the technology is amazing. The opportunities here for creatives and community folks is unparalleled in the world I, I think in the history of the world we have opportunities here to do so much so stick with it um and i'm just excited man i'm grateful and excited to to build awesome stuff with with other builders yeah so thank you man thank you you got me fired up there honestly <laughs> that that was an we need the button in. I don't know if you <laughs> no I, i've been thinking this whole time that uh, and i don't know if it's from um sales or what it's from but you are natural on the mic i think you know tiktok uh, and any thanks. platform where you're going to be able to listen to you is yeah. definitely going to behoove you like you you are great on the mic um thanks, and so man. i my last question something that i want to know i kind of asked something similar to it earlier but you said you are into film um, mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I should bring up one of my favorite things that's going to be on the prize wheel is the original Japanese film posters. I yeah, think yeah, those yeah. are so cool. And I saw the Clint one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. So Dude, I have to cool. ask you. Yeah. Do you have a samurai or western film that you would recommend? Yeah. And, and I'm just going to let you know. I'm going to watch this leading up to the mint. Right. You know, whenever you announce yeah. the mint time and stuff, I'm going to so that I can watch this movie, get fired up, and then you know, hopefully in a couple. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, well, if, if you want to watch modern classics, watch, you know, um, Tarantino's films, you know, th those are basically samurai Westerns, you know, all yes, encompassed sir. and they're all amazing. I mean, Kill Bill, Hateful Eight, you know, any, any of those are going to be great. Uh, Django is 
a masterpiece. Great. Um, if you want to go historical, you know, fist, any of the spaghetti westerns are great. Fistful of Dollars is, you know, Clint Eastwood is going to be amazing. But the best is Seven Samurai. That's the classic. You know, it's a masterpiece. Every frame in, in it is absolutely amazing. Um, Seven so, Samurai. yeah, Seven Samurai or, or Harry Carey. Harry Carey is amazing also. Um, many, any of those early samurai films are apps. I mean, every frame is like a masterpiece. It's just, it's a, it's a work of art. Uh, but what else? Um, you know, the, the, um, I, you know, I love Quarantino. If you're speaking of this kind of genre, it's really Tarantino. It, 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 Coen brothers are good too. They kind of got a Western vibe. I mean, if you get into no country for old men or, True oh, Grit, nice. or, or, and also their new one, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. If you haven't watched that, that's a, a masterpiece of vignettes. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I didn't like that. For, and yeah, uh, us lots of homework uh, when we get <laughs> off this. So we've got uh, Miro okay. was a new one. Fondue. Yeah. We yeah. got uh, uh, what else here? Uh, I don't know. I got, <laughs> yeah, 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 I got a lot of research. I like Tales that. of the yeah. Sea by Sturgill. Yeah. Um, the Brothers. Uh, yeah, Hildebrand, Hildebrand. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess yep. I, I kind of scribbled over that. The brothers Hildebrand. So I'm definitely going to look at those more. And then, like, let me put it to you this way, man. My fiance's got a bachelorette party that she's going to this weekend. So I'm going to sit down and watch Seven Samurai, Harry yeah. Carey. Yeah, Porter. awesome. I'll send you links, man. Well, Jesse, so I'll send you, I'll send you, you links. Much. Thanks, Dave. This was so cool. We really appreciate. it. I wish you all the success on your your mint, and I hope the project does great. Uh, I don't know. I'm sold on it. I, the passion, the energy that you have. I mean, it, it definitely comes through. So we'll be watching, um, rooting for you. And uh, thank you again. We really appreciate your time. We're going to post uh, this on a couple other socials. Like, comment, subscribe, and, um, you know, tell a friend. Tell yeah. your friends about us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, appreciate it, all Jesse. Right. And we'll have the links to all your stuff in our description as well. So Awesome. Thank All you. right. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.